Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, I've got something that I'm sure quite a few of you have been looking forward to. I've been looking forward to it myself, actually. Uh, I ordered a new case for my Game Boy Color. No, I'm kidding. Um, I got this from Funny Playing. This is the new Game Boy Color IPS display. Uh, like their other kits, when you order from their website, uh, they ship them in these hard plastic boxes, which is, by the way, super great because it means that the kits, without a doubt, are going to arrive intact. Uh, unfortunately, the case itself is not big enough for a Game Boy, but, you know, well, unless you got a Game Boy Micro. But that's besides the point. Cool kit. Okay, so in that box, you get some 3M double-sided adhesive that is pre-cut to the appropriate size to install this big honkin' LCD in your Game Boy. And we'll come to that in a second. And then here is the actual ribbon itself. As far as I can tell, it uses pretty much the same electronics as the other kits for like the Game Boy Advance and the Game Boy Advance SP. The only difference is that the layout is um, adapted to fit the Game Boy Color and looks like it has a little uh, touch sensor for uh, brightness control instead of having to wire up buttons. But Oh, and there isn't even uh, solder pads to do that if you wanted to. I guess we'll turn the soldering iron off. We won't need it. Um, I don't know. Looks pretty simple. You don't get much. This is what you get when you order from Funny Playing. If you order the kit from Retro Modding, they include a couple extra things like these brackets here. Um, you don't need these. These just make it easier to install. But you can, you can eyeball it if you want. These don't even come with a um, lens because you could just use any default Game Boy Color lens. Uh, we'll come back to this. We'll see why in a bit. First, let's get started on this thing. This is a perfectly stock Game Boy Color that works just fine. Um, obviously, I've been in this thing because I put some membranes I was experimenting with in there, but that's besides the point. Let's get these batteries out of here. Let's tear this thing down. So the install of this LCD is, the process itself is going to be pretty much identical to the uh, Taobao kit that I did a while back. Well, that's a wonderful noise, isn't it? Uh, I mean, the, the cuts themselves are going to be pretty much the same. The difference is this kit isn't uh, located within the Game Boy Color by the screw posts. Instead, it is located, um, well, by these brackets. That's okay. In hindsight, I probably should have printed those in uh, a different color if I'm using a clear shell. That might have made more sense. Probably going to regret that. Oh, well. And uh, obviously this kit is going to stick out quite a bit, so if you do use a clear shell, be prepared for that. All right. So these, once you got those six tri-wing screws out, there are three JIS or J1 size screws on the Game Boy Color motherboard. They look like Phillips, but they're not, trust me. The difference between Phillips and JIS. An actual JIS driver fits properly, you won't strip out the screw. If you have the if you have a good size Phillips, I mean you can still do it, but you gotta be careful. Okay. All that aside. I have had this thing apart before to clean it up. So the screen should pop out pretty easily. There we go. 
and I'll remove these because we need to do quite a bit of trimming. I was going to leave them in, but I forgot that this wasn't one of those all-in-one kits. We're also going to remove this adhesive, which normally is quite a bit more difficult to get out, but like I said, I've been, been in this one before. Got it cleaned up. All right. Before we do any of the trimming, actual install, let's do some science things here. Get that plugged in. Oh wow, my uh, membrane stained this board. Whoops. Okay, so set that right there. You can hopefully still see that, yep. I'm just going to use this same cart that I tested my other Game Boy with. It's just, it's a, it's a flash cart that I made, but it just has Pokemon Silver on it. Nothing special. There we go. Line up. And, uh, you know, once you get in-game in the overworld here at about 2.4 volts, this console is pulling about 80 to 82 milliamps. Now, the reason I wanted to know that, I know some Game Boys will pull more or less power than others. Some are just more efficient. Uh, some of them have uh, aged a little bit more harshly than others, etc. Um, so just getting a number as far as power usage goes, isn't quite, I don't know, it's not very useful without the context, you know, what was, what does a normal system pull? Now, if you guys go back to, because I'm, I'm sure the question on everyone's mind is how does this stack up to that Taobao kit? If you go back to that video I did, I did test the power consumption on it, but I kind of fucked it up, and uh, I didn't really have this tool to do it right anyway. So, okay, yeah, it's gold contacts up, by the way. This is wonderful. That is probably super easy to rip. So, uh, do take care not to do that. Turn the volume up, turn this thing back on. Anyway, I did test that Taobao console, but I was just using double A's. I used alkalines to test OEM. I have no idea how charged they were, but they were pretty dead in the video. And I used fully charged nickel metal batteries to test the actual kit. So you can see, already we're off to a good start, but I don't have a game in there because I completely forgot. So let's drop a game. I already know the kit works though, so that's nice. Actually, shoot, I'm going to restart that because we want to see default brightness. I started getting ahead of myself playing with the brightness sensor. So already off the bat, we're off to a much better start because my Taobao Game Boy was quite a bit more. <laughs> Um, but there it is, a whopping 190, so what, about 110 milliamps more. So it's going to 
be a little bit worse than having your battery, but it seems to work. Okay. And I guess I'll do some sort of magical editing overlay at this point and show you the testing I did on my Taobao kit, but long story short, that one was about 300 milliamps, roughly. Oh, shoot. Let's test the brightness control, too, while we're here. Why not? Definitely should have not powered this off, but hindsight 2020. Damn it. Okay. Kill those lights again. So this is the default level. If you touch the sensor, it goes up one, and then down back to the minimum. At the minimum level, it's pulling 144 milliamps. Go up one, two, three, I believe this is where it was, and then four for the max, or I guess five, excuse me. Oh, just kidding, that's five. I don't think it's as bright as the other kit, but we'll we'll get to that when I actually got this thing installed. But at max brightness, it is pretty thirsty. So maybe it is pretty comparable to that other kit, but again, sorry, getting ahead of myself. Let's get this thing installed. So Purchase this kit or not from Retromodding. Retromodding does have a pretty nice guide as far as the install goes. Uh, I'm going to unplug this for now before I ruin it. But like I said, uh, the trimming is going to be pretty similar to the Taobao kit. We want to cut off this plastic bit here and these plastic bits up here. Let me get a marker here. So we want to cut here to here. We also want to cut all the way these top bits. So you can stop right before that little uh, divot there, but you also want to get these as well. We might even have to trim the IR window as well. At least I had to on the Taobao kit. So if you have a Dremel, it's probably the easiest tool. But in this case, I'm going to try flush cutters and a utility knife. So how I'm going to use this utility knife, I'm just going to score along the bottom. And you have to be careful of this little uh, bump here. Aftermarket shells don't have that. But of course I'm using an OEM one. That's going to end in disaster if I keep that up. Should be enough for now. I'm going to cut in a little bit. Now we should just be able to bend this. I have pliers around here. Oh well, I guess I'll just keep misusing my flush cutters. Okay. 
come off. Now I'm just cutting off that bump. I don't know if that's just from filling or what. And it doesn't matter if you're uh, a little bit rough on this part because you won't see it through the lens. I mean, you should be gentle just because it'll come out better, but just saying if you're not. Okay. So this part actually didn't cut enough. We want to cut about right here. About there. Probably need to cut a little bit more. And again, you can eyeball it, but if you have the bracket, you don't have to be as uh, precise. So this top part's going to be a little bit more difficult. But let's see what happens. I'm going to do the same thing, just try and score it. All right, sorry, I wasn't paying attention to the camera cut and I kept going a little bit. I got this top bit out, but I'm still working on the rest of it. Oh, that's fun. Um, if you are using flush cutters, probably want to close your eyes when, uh, when you do this. imagine getting shards of plastic in your eye would be fun but hey I don't judge much okay. and this top bit You need to remove two of the three ribs surrounding the IR port part, <laughs> for lack of uh, better terminology. We're just about done. I'm 
I'm just going to smooth out the rough bits. We don't want any pressure spots. That's not going to end well. <laughs> okay. So I think that's about it. The only trimming you can see from the outside is up here. And even that doesn't look too bad. Still need to trim the D-pad, but let's see how this fits otherwise. Or rather, how it doesn't fit, because I forgot to trim this extra little bit here. Okay. Still need to trim a whole bit more. Not sure which side, so we'll do both. I'm gonna have plastic shards everywhere. This is gonna be fun to clean up. Now that fits, but we still got to trim a little bit uh, around the D-pad. But the reason I haven't done that yet is because this cut will be visible. I'm just going to mark it off with Sharpie. When I remove that, we just cut where there isn't Sharpie. And we should be good. We just got to do that. This probably is not going to end well. No. I guess I'll just use the flush cutters, cut out the whole thing. I'm going to try and take little chunks at a time to minimize the uh, stress marks on the plastic. And I'm cutting way more than I need to. But that's a uh, Mostly just because I don't know how to color within the lines. Oops. That was a lot deeper than I meant to cut.
Okay. Thinking that should be good. That could have done better, but that wasn't terrible. Now, everything seems to fit. Notice, you don't actually have to cut down all the way. You only have to cut off basically just the top bit. See how this fits with these spacers I 3D printed. Good tip for removing all those little chunks of plastic. That'll fit in there. I wasn't sure I'd like the look of that blue in there. To be honest, I kind of don't. So I don't think I'm going to use this. LCD doesn't even fit in it. But that's, that's not to say Retro modding's print doesn't work, that's just to say my print didn't come out very good. And these screens are super delicate, so you don't want to force them to go anywhere they don't want to go. fits okay it's just an amazingly tight fit this one goes up here like this this one I'll probably use doesn't seem to fit either. I just don't think my LCD is in the right spot. I'm going to cut a wee bit more. Ooh. Uh, but see, that's flush. I can't really cut any more off of that. And I don't think we got to cut that down. Probably ruining this shell.
Oh, there we go. That fits nicely. That'll hold it in place. Yeah, that looks better, I think. Okay. You don't have to worry about trimming the D-pad. D-pad will fit in there just fine. Same thing with that. I'll just go over the screen. B goes in there. Well, I don't feel bad about ruining the shell because I already ruined it a while ago. I didn't even notice though. There's something you can do called uh, flame polishing. If you're like me and you have a few of these uh, stress marks from cutting, it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. You just take a lighter, hold it there for a few seconds, and it should melt the plastic. And uh, that might take care of the uh, stress marks. Or, alternatively, it might leave you in a much, much worse position. So, use at your own discretion. And yes, I am completely aware that I still have the plastic on the LCD. We're doing a test fit before we commit to this. Oops. You know what? I think. Yeah. I think this bracket actually goes over. this. Try and hold everything in place. You got to be careful about um, attaching that because if you just push down, keep in mind that you're pushing down over a uh, crack there. You don't want to damage the LCD. Okay, so that'll go in like that. Then should be happy. Drop that in there. We'll just do one screw for now. Everything seems to fit pretty nicely. When I scratch the piss out of that. That's fun. Well, I didn't break anything. LCD looks a wee bit low, but I don't think we can bring it up anymore. See, oh. Gotta do some more testing than this, but this is just a... Uh, I don't know, a way to get a feel. There's some light bleed, so if you use a clear shell, keep that in mind, especially at the top. I don't know, looks pretty good though. Let's finish this install. Okay. Actually, before I keep going, I'm gonna take a quick break to clean up my workspation. Works, ooh, excuse me, workspace. And uh, the camera cool down. I'll be back in just a sec. All right, so I want to make it perfectly clear that it is completely fine to use flush cutters to complete this install. Uh, even though I took this thing and cleaned it up with my Dremel here just because 
I mean, it is a clear shell. I'm going to have to live with it after I get this thing fully assembled. So, um, I mean, I have the tool. Why the hell wouldn't I use it? But anyway, that was just purely for aesthetic reasons. Uh, you can see my D-pad cuts. I mean, you can still see them, but looks a little bit better. Uh, again, purely for aesthetic reasons. Zero reason that it's required otherwise. Especially if you're doing a... Um, an opaque build. Go in there like that. And yeah. So before we continue, there is something that I am forgetting to do. So let's get that taken care of before we go any further. If you choose to use this um, adhesive tape to install the screen, do keep in mind that that, is, that makes it a permanent install. Some people can remove the screen from the shell, but usually you can't do that without breaking one of the two. All right, so it's actually very important that you trim these, carp these pins flush. I completely forgot to do that, and I'm glad I didn't get any further with the install. It probably wasn't an issue for me because I didn't... Um, this adhesive is going to add a little bit of extra thickness because I was doing my testing without it. I didn't have to uh, account for that thickness yet. But if I use that adhesive, which is what I'm planning on doing, then I will need to trim these. So, so far this install itself is actually pretty easy. If nothing else, it's just a little bit time consuming. Uh, you don't even have to solder to do this, unlike some of the other kits. So, I mean, it's quite a bit less drop in than the uh, all-in-one kits. But this, unlike the all-in-one kits, gives you a full screen view. You can use uh, OEM style lenses, you know, the works. Okay. These all-in-one style kits have spoiled us. We used to have to trim these mod or pins for pretty much every mod. Oops. We haven't had, I haven't had to do that in a while. Last kit I think was Freckle Shack that I had to do this for. All right. Now, very nearly flush. I think they said you got to trim this one too, but let's see how that lines up. Eh, eh, yeah. I don't like this so much because this is kind of structural. Also a little bit beyond the spec of my uh, flush cutters here. They're uh, they're hanging on. I didn't break them yet. Okay. 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 I think we're good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and insulate these just in case do that, I'm going to use some thin Captain tape here.
just a little bit more. Probably going overboard, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Okay. I think we're good to finish the install. This looks like it goes in this way. Start that at another side. There we go. Keep in mind, again, just to reiterate, if you use this adhesive to install your screen, your screen's not coming out again. Not in one piece anyway. The screens themselves, they're decently cheap. You can get them for like eight bucks from either the Funny Playing store or their uh, AliExpress store. But again, once it's installed, it's not coming out. So I'm going to try my damnedest not to touch this. Get it installed here. Should peel this off first. Now the purpose this adhesive serves is to make sure that the LCD makes a good seal against the casing here. And so that when your lens is installed you can't get any dust in the screen. I'm going to replace this lens, so I'm not too worried about um, the fact that I didn't clean it before installing that, but that's good to go. and That's not going anywhere. So, hopefully I didn't just ruin everything. But if I did, At least a new screen is only eight bucks. Better than like a um, AGS 101 LCD, which is like 50, 60, I don't know. They're kind of pricey these days. I forget how much they are. Whatever. The point is not the specific dollar amount, just that not it's not a cheap mistake unlike if you fuck up the LCD on one of these flux they use to solder this is really sticky. Okay. I think you're supposed to stick this down before and so you can stick it on the um, uh, like on the front underneath the lens or something like on this side especially where there's no LCD but there's spacer instead but I didn't think that so I didn't do that. 
this IR window does need to be trimmed, which is a pain in the see you next Tuesday to do. And how we need to do it, I'm going to have to end up doing this off screen because I don't know how to trim this without using my Dremel. But let me grab a sharpie here. Oh, I don't have a sharpie handy. Oh shit, that's my bad, guys. Um, you basically need to trim this flush, this edge right here. You can sit here with a file and go to town. Uh, but again, I have the tool. I'm going to use it. Um, I'll be back in just a second. Here's what the window looks like before trimming it. And uh, I'll be back. All right, and here is what it looks like when you totally bungled the job. I uh, took off way too much, and then the uh, plastic started to fuse and melt, and it left a nice scar right in the middle. Thankfully, you can't see it from the outside, but it is what it is. This goes in there. I mean, at least it still fits. And when it's all assembled, it should should not go anywhere. Um, this thing. Realistically, I should put that there. But I'm actually going to stick it right in this top corner here. was not the tool for this thing. I think a plastic spudger should work better. There we go. Wait, we can press it down. I'm sure it's all nice and flat. There we go. Right up in that corner there. Drop this back in here. And there we go. That went somewhat smooth. Just looking for my tri-point screwdriver here. You know, I printed like 12 of these things just trying to dial in the settings on my printer. And even this last one I printed still came out like shit. But after all that, and I'm not even using the thing. Oh. I don't have batteries. Uh, I do have batteries, but the drawer is stuck. work and our charge. Nice. Double nice. 
Okay. So let's get... Where's my other Game Boy? There it is. We have this. Two copies of Pokemon Silver. And this is the Taobao Game Boy versus Funny Playing's new. Already, right off the bat, you can see the black levels are much better on Funny Playing's kit. Sorry, I'll try and stabilize that. at max brightness. So this one's brighter. I think. Great, now the sound's out of sync. So yeah, just side by side, the funny playing kit looks brighter to me at max brightness. Of course, this one has that cool on-screen display for changing brightness. There are 60 steps. But I mean, you can see just the whites. There we go. Just hitting the wrong spot. Even this one gets darker too. By the way, that's that rolling shutter effect. You don't see that in person. I don't know why that's showing on the camera. Oh, and of course, one of my cartridges thinks it's night and the other thinks it's day. That's wonderful. <laughs> that makes comparing the colors nice and easy, doesn't it? Hmm. Gonna have to do something else then. Overall though, just walking around, I don't see any frame dropping, I don't see any uh, tearing. Overall it looks very nice, very smooth. Of course there is a little bit of a lag right there while the game loads, but that's a game thing, not a Game Boy thing. Look at the trees, nice and smooth. I'm really happy with it. I mean, that was never an issue with the Taobao kit either. That was just an issue with some of the some of the recent kits, like the All-in-One kit, uh, McWill. Oh, actually, you know what? Now that I look at it, I do notice a... Um, I guess it is dropping a frame. I never noticed that. Shame. This is the Taobao kit that I'm talking about. Let me pause the video again. I'm going to go grab a third Game Boy for a comparison and um, another game that I want to check out. There is one more test that I want to do with these and uh, well, you'll see in just a second. I'll be right back. You have to forgive me with a 3D printer going in the background. I'm doing a quick reshoot of something I was a section I did last night. Um, I had three of my Game Boys side by side and I was comparing the uh, colors of them all. Um, I have, of course, on the left here is stock El Clono AGS 101 uh, Game Boy Color. Uh, on the right here, my Taba mod, and then in the middle, I had the um, uh, kit I just did, the Funny Playing Game Boy Color mod. But I made a really dumb mistake. And the fact that one of my games was set tonight should have been a good clue. I forgot that there were three different colors in Pokemon Silver. Uh, one of them being Morning. 
Oops, and it looks like we have a uh, special guest here. Hang on. Alright, so this was, of course, the one cart that was actually set to the right time. Mostly. I don't think we have to save, but I'll save anyway. So my main criticism was that this game appeared awfully yellow. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Which would make sense, because that was the one game that had the cart set to morning. So here's all three of them on the menu screen. The reason I have the AGS-101, the El Clono Game Boy Color, is because I think that is the closest we can get to an analog as far as which color is correct. Uh, they're all set to about the same brightness, uh, so of course this neither of these two are at max brightness, and this one is of course at max brightness. But just look at the colors, decide for yourself. Um, if this one is the most accurate, the Taobao mod looks the second accurate, and then the Funny Playing Kit looks the third accurate to me. That's just how it is. As far as white levels go, this one has by far the best whites, but this one looks more accurate to this. And in town, this is significantly less yellow than it was, but it's still more yellow than this one. I'm looking at the whites and the gravel there. Make sure it's focused. And this kind of rolling shutter effect that you see on this one on the right, that you don't see that in person, that's just a camera thing. The contrast is better on this screen compared to this one but the color temperature still seems off. You know, the floor's more pink, stuff like that. Interestingly, the floor seems purple on this one, so it's not like this is the only one that's off. It probably depends greatly on the game. Like, for instance, this is just Pokemon Silver. Other games might be more or less accurate. So yeah, the colors aren't perfectly accurate, but... I mean, they're not bad either. Not nearly as bad as I made it seem yesterday. Or last night. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and get this cut into the video and I'll get that uploaded and we'll be good to go. And uh, we'll continue with the video and you'll ignore those nice continuity errors with the uh, 3D printer and we'll just pretend it's all copacetic. Alright, and before we get back to our regularly scheduled programming, I do want to swap out this tab out kit here with one of these uh, all-in-one kits. This one specifically is the uh, pirate all-in-one kit with the uh, the one that doesn't drop frames. Helps that's in focus, huh? So same order, we have the AGS-101 on the left, uh, Taobao kit on the right, and then all-in-one on the left. Jesus. Taobao in the middle, all-in-one on the right, AGS-101 on the left. Oof. It's not nearly as washed out as the camera makes it look, it's just brighter. Let's 
So, like before, the color is definitely different on the main menu. This one actually seems closer, the all-in-one kit seems actually closer to the desired color. But, I mean, e e either way, none of them look bad, they just look different. Now that they're all set to the same time in game. Thank you for a couple people on the Game Boy Discord for pointing that out to me. I made a dum dum there. Of course, the black levels suck tremendously on this one. They even suck on this Game Boy too, but they're worse on this one. By far the best on this one. And I like testing this sort of thing with Pokemon because um, it's pretty easy to see any obvious visual errors and like it or not, I mean it is one of the best selling games of all time, especially for Game Boy. Uh, so if it doesn't work on Pokemon, chances are pretty good that someone's going to notice. Uh, and you know, it, it, it's a game I like to play, so why not? But here we go. Uh, you can, if you look at the colors on the back of the trainer, I mean, they all look the same to me in this case. But here's your video evidence. You can take a look at that, see, use it how you will. Oh, Quagsire looks different on all three. It's brightest on this one, darkest on this one. But. There you go. So yeah, now I'll get this and the other footage spliced into my other footage and replacing that really bad, inaccurate footage. And uh, we'll be back to our regularly scheduled program in just a second here. Thank you. Let me actually bring in the Game Boy Advance here. This is using a funny playing kit as well. And right now I have Legend of Zelda DX loaded up on a flash cart. Let's set this down. And the reason I wanted to show this off is because this is using the same LCD as the Game Boy that I just set up. So when you when the screen scrolls, you can see this like really weird image effect with these posts and with that chain. Especially if we go back and forth. It's hard to see on my phone screen, but I think it should look a little bit better on the actual video itself. You see things that are flickering that shouldn't be. And especially if you look in the green grass area, that should remain green the whole time, but there's this uh, ghosting, I guess, of the image. But it's more of a glitch with this game in particular, because this doesn't occur with the regular version of Legend of Zelda, just the DX version, which I think is super weird. And this guy's chain, you could see it like flickering all the way over until the screen finishes transitioning. You don't see this on other backlight kits, like AGS-101 mods. But I wanted to show that. Oh, sorry. Let's take a look. These two here. And I'm using the flash card so that I have three copies of the game. I gotta bring my camera up a little. And we'll start Zelda GB. These all have the same save file. And I'm pretty sure none of these are going to have that effect. It's hard to watch all three at the same time. 
but since I'm recording, oh, you know what? You can see it on this one. That's interesting. Especially when you go back and forth. Zoom in. Low tech, zoom in. I wonder if that's just an artifact of the screen itself or what? Because, oh, I don't know where the hell I went on this one. Okay. So I don't, I sort of kind of see it on this one. It's much less noticeable though. Whereas on this one, there's nothing. Perfect. The gold standard right here. All right, so what's the point of all this, you might ask? Well, there really isn't a point. Um, I guess not every kit is perfect. Every kit has its own trade-offs. And I think that's one of the trade-offs with this kit, is that the uh, there is some ghosting with that LCD. But, I do, I do gotta say, the uh, actual frame rate, um, the fact that there's no tearing, all that seems really nice. Oh, you know what? Let's do one final test. Pinball. Because I know this was a uh, hot topic for Freckle Shack here. I don't expect to run into any issues, but... Yeah, it looks fine to me. There we go. So yeah, I'm gonna have to do some more playing with this screen, really get a feel for it. But uh, so far, I really like what I see. Uh, as far as modification goes, it's about the same amount of work to install as that Taobao screen. But the difference is it is significantly cheaper and so much easier to get your hands on. The Taobao screen was like 120 bucks or something, and it took me like a month and a half or two months or something just to get the stupid thing. Um, of course, this was like two years ago, so I had the benefit of having that thing for like two years. Or, okay, I didn't have mine for two years. I've had mine for closer to a year, but it's been out for two years. Anyway, um, this kit is a little bit more expensive than the all-in-one kits, but I mean, as long as nothing changes, like, you know, it doesn't randomly crap out and kill my Game Boy. The only downside seems to be that it requires more work to install, and it's going to suck down your battery quite a bit faster. But otherwise, I think that's a nice, you know, that's a reasonable trade-off with uh, how nice the screen looks. Yeah, the colors do seem a bit off now that I've compared it side by side with a few other kits, but... I mean, just playing this one game without... Um, you know, without two other Game Boys next to it to compare it to, it doesn't look bad to me. It looks fine. I mean, if you want to be a perfectionist, yeah, it does look a little bit different, but... If you want to be a perfectionist, you shouldn't be backlighting your Game Boy Color in the first place. Um, sorry, that's neither here nor there. I guess the point of all that is I really like this kit. I'm really happy with this. Uh, I think it was, uh worth the 48, 49 bucks or whatever it costs. Uh, one thing I do gotta say, if you are in the US and you order this kit from Funny Playing, it looks like they're using a shipping partner called Nugistics. And Nugistics sucks ass. Oh my God, they lost my package for like a week and a half. It was an hour away from one of my buddies, like literally the next town over. And it was just sitting with Nugistics for a week and a half before they finally got it over to them. And that's just ridiculous, in my opinion. Um, I can't play and talk at the same time. It's hard enough. Um, so, on that note, I wait for Retro Madden. Re ooh. 
retro modding to get the kit, pick it up from them or something. Uh, go with another vendor, at least if you're in the U.S. If you're not in the U.S., you don't have to worry about that at all. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy with this kit. If there's anything you all want me to try out in particular, let me know. I'll be glad to test it out. Otherwise, I'm going to go dig through my reserves, see if I can't find a nice new lens to pop on this bad boy. And I'm going to call it a night. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.